Hello, and thank you so much for tuning into A Voice for All. I am your host, Jamila Gamble, and if it's your first time watching A Voice for All, it is the only show on Rogers TV that proudly promotes disability awareness and education right here in the Peel region. We talk to educators, frontline staff, parents, and most importantly, individuals themselves with a variety of disabilities. And speaking of disabilities, I have Tammy from White Birch Special Needs Day Program. Tammy, let's go back to the get-go of how we met. <laughs> like, 10 years? Ten, more, 12? more. It's got to be at least 15. Okay, at least, wow. At least 15 yeah. when we met. Yes, yes, that is so true. And we worked for the city of Brampton. Yes. We did their day programs, and now you are running your own day program. Um, I don't run it. I, well, much. I work there. You pretty much run it. <laughs> Let's just say you run it. Okay. Carlo runs it. Carlos runs it. But and I you, work for Carlo. You're the commander in chief. Program coordinator. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> White Birch. I first heard of it about a year ago because someone I used to work with, his mom went there and she was giving me like these raving reviews about finally she found somewhere for her son. Tell us about the program. Um, our program is located in Palgrave. We have a building that uh, is located on an acre of property. Wow. So with our program, it's unique in the sense that we don't have wait lists, we don't have restrictions, everybody's welcome. We have uh, 26 participants right wow. now. Wow. Um, some are full-time, some are part-time. Mm -hmm. They have a wide vari um, variety of disabilities. So we have a very broad spectrum and we try to accommodate to everybody's needs. What I love the most about the program is, like you said, the doors open to everybody, but there is an increasing need for day programs. Like, they're really, they're, there's not a lot out there. Yes, the number one um, complaint we get from parents is that there are so many wait lists and there's not a lot of programs. Yeah. So that's where we kind of pick up because we don't have a wait list. We, anyone can call us and they can come right on in. And how does the like cow like I'm, I'm so shocked to hear like that there is no wait list like what why why don't you guys have one um we're a new program we're slowly growing mm -hmm. um well i wouldn't say slow we started no, you're doing i believe well. they started out with uh five participants and now we're at 24 25 26 crazy up in there and uh every year as people keep graduating we just keep accumulating more participants and as word of mouth gets around mm -hmm. um people come and check out our building, check out our program, see what we're doing, and, mm -hmm. you know, register their children. So what do you think that makes you guys stand out from the other, the other groups? I know, because I've seen some things, but what, what is it that's special or unique about you guys? I think it's just that um, we really care about the program. Um, Carlo owns the business, and mm -hmm. so um, he's very passionate about what he does. We, like I said, we are on an acre property up in Palgrave, which is located in Caledon. Mm -hmm. So we have the Trans Canada walkway. Um, we do a lot of community events. Mm -hmm. We bring our participants out to volunteer. We go on oh, trips. Um, we just, we're really commu community oriented. Yeah. And we like to get out and be involved. So it's nice because people can come out of the city into the country. Um, there, I don't believe there are any other day programs located in a country setting. And so mm. um, they're just able to, to be out in the open mm -hmm. and just not have the restrictions of a rec center or, um, you know, a little yeah. unit in a building. We yes. have a huge building. It used to be an old schoolhouse mm -hmm. built in the 1800s, and there's been some additions put onto it. It's fully accessible. We have two rooms right now and wow. hopefully expanding into a third one. I'm I, honestly like I'm so not only excited, but I, I feel like a sense of relief. Um, I've worked at different day programs. I've seen how some day programs are run. I'm not always, always happy with some of the things I've seen. Um, but from photos, not only photos, but most importantly, parent testimonials, I've heard nothing but good things about White Birch. And, and most, most special of all, I think a couple months ago, you guys posted a video of Andrew's birthday. I tears. I I <laughs> I watched it and I was just sobbing because it was so special. Yes. Well, everyone that we have, we are very close with. Mm -hmm. um, we get everybody involved, and birthdays are something to be celebrated. Yeah. And they're with their friends. Everybody is twenty-one and over. Mm -hmm. 
um, it's just nice that they're able to celebrate their birthdays with their friends. Yeah. They're all the same age, you know, just being with their peers. And birthdays are exciting. And everybody it. gets a birthday cake, and we have a party that for was a cake. every single birthday. That so was a big cake. It, we have a lot of people to feed, and people <laughs> like cake. And, and it's nice because yeah. we have a lot of parties. And with so many participants, we celebrate staff birthdays as well. And they're all milestones. And it's a we, family. We are a family. So... Um, you know, we care for the participants the same way we would care for our children. Yeah. So we're all, you know, in it together and we're all growing together and learning together. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really good, the way everybody meshes is really, it's really good. And I, I can feel that energy from even talking to you now and, and talking to Andrew's mom. Andrew's mom's been on the show before. And I know when he was graduating, because uh, I went to his graduation, that was a really big worry for her was where he was going to go afterwards right she felt like almost lost and then when she found you guys i could see that she had like like this weight removed off her shoulders especially that he got accepted and and then you guys work with trans help so that there's yeah could come in and okay yep so we have with our program transportation is provided mm. um within caledon and most of our participants come from brampton right so anywhere in peel trans help will bring them up mm -hmm. um i believe there's an agreement created with trans help so ambulatory people are able to come up to us, Great. not just people um, with wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that makes a big relief because it's door-to-door -door service. So the bus picks them up from their homes, mm -hmm. they come up to us, and we make sure that they're home safe at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So nobody, no parents have to drive up that's to Paul good. Grade. And that's a big thing too, right? For parents who are working and they, they want their, their, you know, their adult child to have that independence too. That's another, I'm sure, a key factor, right? That they get to go, they get picked up. Mm -hmm. Oh, this makes me happy. For people who are watching and don't understand the importance of adult day programs, what do you want them to know about White Birch and the, the value of it? Just that it's a great place for them to be with their peers. Mm -hmm. um, they need a sense of independence. They need to feel a belonging. They need to feel involved in their community. And it's just a great place for everybody to just hang out. You yeah. know, we do different things. We tailor our activities to everybody's needs and interests. Perfect. Um, we break up into smaller groups. So if some people are interested in going to the mall, they would go to the mall. If other people are interested in doing, mm -hmm. you know, guys things, we had a guys day today. So, oh. so they all went out and did a golf simulator. Like, it's just we really tailor it to what they want mm -hmm. and to what they're going to get out of the program and just to enhance their quality of life. And I love that you focused on age appropriate. Yeah, like age appropriate, definitely. Golf stimulators and make, they could go for beer, I guess. Technically, they, they can they're go of beer. age. We've uh, <laughs> we've had um, we play a lot of uh, a lot of games that are you know geared to twenty one year olds, mm -hmm. um, but they're all appropriate for a day program. Right. And uh, we had one participant who got accepted into a program at Humber College, and when we said goodbye to him to go to his program, we had a frat party. And, you know, we had our, uh, our non-alcoholic beer, but we just had, like, a, a toga party. And, you know, and it was a lot of fun because those are things that people yeah. their age would be experiencing. And we, sure. want, we want them to be experiencing life how everyone else would be Oh, my gosh. Life. Like, you, you have no clue how happy I am to hear that you guys did that. Because that is, it's current, and it's, and it's to his age. And it's a, it's a moment that any other 21 year old would experience, right? A couple of months ago, you guys had a huge, I guess it was a community gala to raise money. That wasn't for White Birch. That was with um, a charity called the Carson Foundation, okay. which Carlo also runs. So ah. he's the president of that charity. So what can the community do to further support White Birch? Um, just welcome us. Mm -hmm. So if you see us out and around, um, just, you know, don't be afraid and come right. on up and we have a great open door policy. So for parents, for anyone in the community, if they just want to come and check us out, mm -hmm. we're located on Highway 50 in Palgrave and people can just, you know, come on and see what we're doing. What about supplies and donations? We are always open <laughs> for supplies and donations. Yeah. Um, any craft activities, anything, yeah. you know, that might be of value, we gladly accept. And volunteers? And volunteers. We are always looking for volunteers. So if anyone needs their 40 hours of community service for the summertime right. or for high school, mm -hmm. you know, or just anyone um, doing a co-op placement, we are open to, to bringing people in. I wouldn't even say anyone. Like, what's a specific 
quality that you guys would look for if you were to bring somebody in? Like what kind of spirit would they have to have? Just to be open and to be energetic and just to be um, willing to learn. So yeah. we can learn from them mm -hmm. and they can learn from us and everybody has unique, oh, what's the word? Everyone has like unique qualities about them yeah. and just something that they can bring into us and we can, you know, in return, give to them. <sighs> Seriously, like the level of excitement I'm experiencing right now is absolutely real. Um, again, I've been in the field. I've known Tammy for 15 years. We're actually being re reconnected tonight. Um, there is not a lot of day programs. And some of the day programs that are there do not cater uh, the way that White Birch is to their, to their clients. And I'm overwhelmed with joy knowing that there's people I've worked with who are in this family. It's not a program. It's not a center. It's like going, it's like leaving home and going to another home. You know, there's that, that family sense of vibe, there's that, that love that's there that's absolutely essential um, in any type of setting for anyone to work in. So if you are work, looking for your volunteer hours, if you are looking for an organization that you want to support, please, this is someone that you totally have to reach out to. Their information is at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you are a parent who has a child who's graduating soon and you're getting really anxious about what's going to happen, White Birch is right there. Door is open. There is no wait list. Yes, no wait list. And this is definitely a program that gives I give my thumbs up to. So thank you, Tammy. Thank you, White Birch. We're not done here on A Voice for All. We'll see you guys after the commercial break with another great guest. Welcome back to A Voice for All. I am your host, Jamila Gamble, and I am trying my best to hold my laughter in. And the only reason why I'm laughing is because I finally have Rabia on my show. She doesn't need a last name. Teal knows who Rabia is, okay? We have a 12-minute interview. Pray with me that we, we do this interview in this time frame. Rabia is everything under the sun. She is a woman an incredible woman here in the Peel region who ran for city councilor or was a regional city council city councilor she's a mother of four okay. she recently opened a new center and she's blind i know it's crazy ravia hey welcome to the voice for all great to be finally here finally here five seasons later and you are here <laughs> you know what it was you were just you were you were great in the previous years but now you're like whoa <laughs> And that's why I got you on this season, because like, you're right. on a new level of uh, amazingness. <laughs> um, again, like, I'm so excited to have you on, because you do so much within the Peel region, being a woman of color who happens to be Muslim and blind. And I love saying it, because I don't think people could accept it just yet, because <laughs> you do so much. Um, so again, it's really awesome to have you on the show. And you have a lot of exciting news, which I don't want to be the one to reveal, so I'll let you let it out. All right, thanks. Well... Um, one of the things I do, as you know, is, is a lot of advocacy work around disability, but I'm mm -hmm. also involved in establishing an organization called Dean Support Services. Mm -hmm. Dean stands for Disability Empowerment Equality Network Support Services. Right. And we are opening our first center in the greater Toronto area, our first home on 1486 Southdown Road called the Muniba Center, and it'll officially open with a ribbon cutting oh. on May 14th. There's a ribbon cutting? Yes. What time is this happening? May 14th, 11 to 12 in the morning. Wow, there's a ribbon cutting. This is big. Cause so you, I hope you can join us. You, I will try my very best. I know I have a couple of events on that date, but you have been waiting for this moment. Yes. Like you guys had fundraisers, you've been promoting, and finally the doors are opening. We have been renovating. We have right. made the first floor 
fully accessible with a ramp and a, and a, and a washroom and that's wheelchair accessible and mm -hmm. we've done lots and lots of work to fulfill requirements mm -hmm. to be zoned as an adult center with uh, life skills programming. Now who are you servicing? We are servicing all individuals with disabilities but our day program will be focused on people with developmental disabilities from you know ASD to pervasive developmental delay and everything in between. Now why why a center for that population? Well, there are huge waiting lists. People after the age of 21 really have very limited opportunities when they have developmental disabilities in terms of finding a job, pursuing higher learning, mm -hmm. uh, being engaged full time, feeling productive and included in society. The programs that exist are limited, mm -hmm. are not meeting necessarily the caregiver's um, sort of daily uh, needs to go out and work or, or develop skills and pursue a career. So our program will be unique in the sense that we will operate extended hours. We will provide an option for extended hours so that wow. caregivers can go out and do what they do. That, you know what, I love that you focused on the family as well. Like it's one thing to, to provide services to, you know, obviously the, the children of those families, but to think of them and like, yes, they have lives as well. They have things that they want to yes. do. I have to commend you for that. That's awesome. Thank you. Now, in terms of building this center and, and fundraising, how difficult has that been for the past couple of years? Well, it's a lot of educating, particularly in diverse communities. Right. Our donor base has predominantly been the Muslim community in the GTA. And most immigrant communities, most first generation Canadians who have come from Eastern and, and you know, Southern uh, cultures believe that, you know, within our North American context, government takes care of everything, mm -hmm. especially for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. So we have to break the stereotypes. We have to demystify the challenges and, and we really have worked hard to educate mm -hmm. and then show people their social and spiritual responsibility Bravo. toward giving so that we can offer vital services. Beautifully said. Now I want to go back to the cultural attitudes um, just because I think you know we're doing as much as we can to educate people but there's still a lot of families um, who are coming to terms with you know new diagnosis or or their their relative now being out in the public like how what do you say to that to families who are still struggling well uh, I'm, I'm very empathetic toward toward that challenge I mean I'm a person with a disability born with a disability blind at this stage in my life I have two adult brothers younger than I am with developmental disabilities and and our baby sister has the same eye condition as I do she's 34 she ain't a baby but you know what I mean mm -hmm. so you know we've grown up going through that process mm -hmm. and our parents to, to up till now have a lot of difficulty accepting particularly our brother's issues and that comes from a, another huge gap in, in the system. Parents are not getting the kind of counseling and supports they need throughout the journey of caring for individuals with disabilities. We as a community what can we do to support those families? Again, if we, you know, just simply even smile and, and uh, say hello uh, genuinely like we would to anyone else right. instead of just giving the looks. Yes. If we shift attitudes, that would go a long way to supporting families. And in terms of supporting your program, this is a new program that's launching in the Peel region. Finally, another program for parents to choose from. What can we do to support your program? Well, spread the word, mm -hmm. encourage uh, people to check us out online and uh, make arrangements to come visit us. We're hoping to expand our day program in the fall. Mm -hmm. We've maintained an a weekly activity night for the past four years uh, out of a local mosque because that's what we could get as a free facility. And now that we have our own location, there will be a lot more programming coming. We want people to check out our Facebook and, and stay in touch with us and spread the word and, and help us reach people who are understanding and empathetic toward disability rights and who, who would actually 
write us some checks. Yes, <laughs> yes, say it. Checks, donations. Checks, donations, <laughs> wallets, other forms of mon money. Trans yes, and help us advocate and help <laughs> us advocate with the province to yeah. increase funding to the sector, and particularly within the region of Peel, we want our fair share. I, you see, I knew you'd say it, and, I'm, <laughs> and I love the fact that you did. We do need our fair share. For people who might be um, watching and may have a skill that might be of benefit to you, good, you got it. <laughs> mm -hmm, don't worry. And, and for people who, who might have a skill, what are some programs that you would like to start but maybe don't have the support yet in terms of people in the community? Um, one of the programs we're interested in starting, and again, every ta everything takes funding. We yes. don't want to drain our volunteers. We have very dedicated volunteers mm -hmm. that support us right from shoveling the snow on the property to raking the leaves and, and cleaning the house. Mm -hmm. um, they have been very, very generous. Families have been very generous. Young people, we've been able to engage some, uh, quite a few young men, interestingly. Um, you know, usually uh, folks who get engaged with disability issues tend to be females and young females. Mm. In this case, we, we have quite the dedicated uh, male segment of the population. And I wonder why that is. Uh, I, it, it's just working, which, which is wonderful for our men with developmental disabilities because the majority of folks that we are serving demographically mm -hmm. there is a dispar there, there's there's a, a, a disproportionality between the genders there's more males yes. than females with right. developmental disabilities right so to have more men involved is wonderful wow uh, you know what Th that's a fact that i never even knew so i'm glad you brought that up um and again with with the community um, and I always ask my guests these questions, and I, I'm, I'm so excited to ask you because I know you're just <laughs> going to give me that out-of-the-park answer. <laughs> Do you think we as a community mm -hmm. are doing enough to support individuals who have disabilities? I don't think we are. As soon as we witness a behavior, we call 911. As soon as um, we, you know, see something unusual uh, in terms of behavior between a caregiver and the individual, we're just, you know, not necessarily supportive to the caregiver. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just an intervention of, hey, how's it going, shifts that behavior in mm -hmm. an individual. Uh, instead, we reinforce negative behaviors. We isolate people with disabilities, it, particularly people with intellectual or developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. And we, we just don't... We're not inclusive as a society. Where there's a lot of work being done, we throw the word around yep. of inclusion, but it's really not an inclusive community or inclusive society at this stage. Mm, that's why Robbie is on the show. <laughs> that's exactly because I knew she was going to say it, and there's things I wish I could say, but I know Robbie is going to say it way better, and she absolutely did. We still have work to do. And on this particular episode of A Voice for All, we focused a lot on day programs. I didn't even know that we would be creating such magic. And I'm so happy that the Peel region has two programs, two brand new programs that are for adults 21 and plus, because a lot of people still don't understand, Robbie, that children that we give that love and support to grow up to become adults. Absolutely. And by the way, yes, the day program will be 21 plus. Mm -hmm. uh, so folks who have left school. Yes. However, we still take on people 13 plus or, uh -huh. or mature enough who are looking for evening and weekend social recreational activities. Everything. Everything right there in this brand new house. I'm so excited for this launch. It's been a long time coming. And if you want to connect with Rabia, she is a woman you definitely want to talk to. All her information is below. Congratulations on your new center being open. Be sure to check it out and be sure to support them in any way, shape, or form. Another fantastic episode of Voice for All. I will catch you guys next week. Take care. <laughs>